All right, we're back. We are uh, here. I'm very excited for this intro because Carlton uh, said he's prepared but would not let me in on on what he's going to say. So he's got to keep the element of surprise. Yeah, I'm mainly excited to hear about you. But we had Timothy Dooner on the show. Uh, Carlton, you you heard the episode. I have thoughts based on the things that you and I had talked about two episodes ago. Um, but I, I, yeah, I've been building up anticipation. What, what do you have to say? Yeah, it really was perfect timing. And just the fact that we talked about this conversation a couple weeks ago and um, it was very uh, interesting, especially around uh, his thoughts and what he's doing in the industry right now. So I won't uh, spoil his thunder, but is that is that even right? Spoil their thunder? No, for sure right. not. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I didn't even, yeah, spoil his yeah. thunder. <laughs> something, something. Spoil we need that on a t-shirt. Spoil his thunder. <laughs> Content district closers. Yeah, so you know, early on he was talking about audience, building an audience, and it really is one of the harder things about a podcast. There's lots of people that um, want to start a podcast, and he said something that like that is super super accurate. It's the barrier to entry to start a podcast is non existent, but it's huge for staying in it and and mm. staying and keep playing the game to keep playing the game. Um, just the consistency, the time, and really trying to make, um, you know, make that uh, habit that you do every single week. Um, so that was really good. And then also, um, he was he was talking about how with his new company they're kind of approaching a different audience, and um, it's not necessarily that they're doing entirely new content. It's they're just they're framing it in a different way. Mm-hmm. They're taking a different approach, and so you know, there's the idea of repackaging content but then there's also the idea of bringing people who repackage content together to have another approach so yeah it's like and, a, and putting a, a different lens over whether it be existing or new content you know a lot of their stuff i think is news based so yeah. um, there will be times where it's a lot of not new content fresh content but the but the uh themes or the execution might stay similar to what he'd been doing with what the truck. But if you're not familiar with it, essentially what Dooner had been doing, I think he explains this a little bit is he'd been running content for freight waves, uh, which is targeted more towards logistics and supply chain professionals, I would say shippers and carriers, uh, anyone who's a part of that world. And now he's transitioning with the new show or the new platform to be more focused on the driver themselves, as well as the broker, the person who is booking uh, the loads. And we had just spent time two episodes ago, you can go listen to it, talking about the need for content uh, to be specifically tailored to those people. And to what you're saying, I think it's a lot of the same themes. It's a lot of the same information, but it's drawn through a different lens that is tailored to that audience. So it's really cool. I'm really excited to, to hear about it. And when you're building an audience, I don't think you can discount the value of entertainment. And when you, when you have entertainment and something's like interesting, not just informational, but it's interesting to listen to and it's enjoyable to listen to, um, that brings a whole new, uh, audience as well. So, um, you know, he, he mentioned a little bit that they're going to be doing a little bit more hot takes Mm -hmm. and, you know, you can see this trend even in cable news and stuff like that, where it's not just enough to bring the news people want to hear the hot takes so it's particularly just, uh, when it's and i think again that goes to who the audience is that's it's probably one of the big takeaways and i think people will enjoy hearing how he crafts that message for his audience but his audience is sitting in a truck for yeah. 10 to 12 hours it's boring time. you know what i mean and the broker uh is sitting at a desk for eight to ten hours and and is is also probably somewhat mundane and repetitive so for them specifically entertainment is of is of particular value but i totally agree uh the one other thing i would mention is we are going to link as much as we can in the show notes some of those links won't go live for probably another week or so when the uh platform actually launches and so what you can do in the meantime you know what i'm going to say oh you can go give content is for closers a review that's right you can go right now Go in your podcast app, go in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever it might be. Give us a five-star review. Let us know your feedback. uh, And I will read those on air. And I promised that I was going to do this before. So we just need to to read. We've got three that have come in. That's right. 
Uh, we need to uh, to to give a quick shout out to a few of these that have come in. And by the way, I've these are the three that I could for sure tell came in. Uh, I had a few other people who mentioned that they had also given reviews, but I I don't know if you didn't write anything or uh, what happened, but uh, I didn't see those. So screenshot it, email it to me, Adam at Stratfire.com if I if I didn't get it, and I will read those uh, next week. All right, the first one comes from Vivat. And it says, uh, stellar podcast, five-star review, incredible guests on this podcast, lots of great insights on marketing and scaling your business. Thanks, y'all. Very nice. Very kind. Thank you, Vivat. The second is from Johnny Game Time Gamut. You can guess who that is. Uh, I feel like but, I've heard, of that, heard that name before. Great content, always. Five-star review. I always learn something listening to this show. Great insights for anyone who wants to learn. Appreciate that, Johnny. And the last is from Satcorn Holio. Uh, who also gave a five-star review and said, great pod, fantastic content about your about marketing your business and gaining new customers. Great guests, highly recommend. Well, listen, if, you, if I missed your review or if you uh, haven't given one yet, go give one right now. Uh, you're going to want to because this episode with Dooner uh, was particularly fun and particularly well done, if I do say so myself. So listen to it, give us a review. Let's get into it with Timothy Dooner. On today's episode, we have Timothy Dooner. Dooner is the host of the ever popular What the Truck podcast. He's also the director of audio for Freight Waves. And as he shares in our interview, he is now the creative director for the brand new content platform, Back the Truck Up, which he describes as the barstool sports for the trucking industry. During our conversation, we got to talk to Dooner about what he's building with Back the Truck Up, the opportunities he sees for driver focused content, the challenges in launching a brand new platform, and how podcasting factored into his journey to sobriety. This was a really fun episode to record. Dooner is obviously a professional, and he did an incredible job sharing his experience, as well as offering stories that can guide all of us. Let's get into it with Timothy Dooner from Back the Truck Up. All right, we have the world famous, or at least the freight famous, <laughs> Dooner here on the show. Thanks for joining the show, Dooner. Adam, thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to be on here for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I know we've crossed paths a number of times. Just uh, I think uh, some of our Oakley, maybe Golf Relay, some of these uh, clients that we work with have have interacted with your shows. Um, and all of that was in relation to What the Truck and and the Freightcast Network, which I know you're, you're still doing. Um, but the reason I wanted to get you on today and, and, and the things that I wanted to hear about were kind of around what you're doing next. And I know you've sort of uh, alluded to and, and talked about building uh, this new media company, Back the Truck Up. I, I've seen you refer to it as the bar stool of um, freight and logistics. Um, so first of all, we'd just love to hear what that even means and, and kind of like, you know, the, the roadmap to get there. Yeah, no, absolutely. So. You know, you mentioned what the truck and with what the truck, uh, we've been very successful with that with that content and with you know sort of my unique vo viewpoint and the dude's unique viewpoint and uh, being a little bit more energetic and aggressive and visual and casual with a lot of this information. And it's resonated really well, and we've we've been thinking for a while of ways to expand this content, expand the brand, and how to do that. And recently, our CEO and founder Craig Fuller reached out to me, and he was like, "Hey." What would you think about um, being the creative director and, and helping us launch this site, you know, taking the lead on this site that we want to address the driver in the seat, the mm. broker behind the desk, and more down to earth look at Freight Waves? We do a really awesome job at addressing like the C suite and addressing the market. But I think that sometimes outside of like maybe shows like What the Truck, and we could go even further there. Um, we're missing uh, we're missing a lot of targets there, and I think the biggest one is something I key on quite frequently, which is people. And now it's putting that lens and that focus, especially to start, is really on the driver mm -hmm. and having a, a platform for them. And if you look at trucking media right now, there's a lot of different like influencers who are very successful on TikTok and YouTube, but it's all very sort of disjointed. It hasn't really been brought together in one community. And that's what we want this platform to be. We want it to be a little bit edgier, a little bit louder, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more opinionated than freight waves with the voice being to that driver, to that broker, and uh, really delivering upon that in new and unique ways. And you know, what's really inspiring me too is like those influencers I mentioned, people are doing amazing jobs of translating from the cab this industry um, to their peer group who really understand and resonate with them. 
And we're taking that same philosophy from, from day one. My first three hires on the site are all veteran truck drivers mm. who are going to be bringing this content to you. It's not a bunch of posers. It's not a bunch of pretenders. I'm the only pretender who hasn't been in a truck at Back the Truck Up. Right, right. But we'll get to, we'll get to your background. I think you've spent enough time um, in the space to, to qualify. But I, I am curious. So <clears throat> when you talk about the driver experience and um, wanting to sort of support and surround this audience member, we just, and I, I, I interacted with you on Twitter about it, but we just came back from the Mid-American Trucking Show a couple of weeks ago. Great experience. Um, you know, 50,000 truckers, uh, just very unique event, I would say, uh, for, for the entire industry. But the one thing that we walked away from was like, even with all of the, obviously there's a ton of emphasis on recruiting and selling, uh, whatever to, to drivers. But even with all of that, there was Sirius was there and there was a couple others. Um, there was just very little content in general that was actually targeted the drivers. There was a lot of content talking to, um, you know, the folks who might employ drivers or to, uh, to, to trucking companies or whatever, but the drivers themselves, I think got overlooked in a lot of, uh, areas. And then, you know, they talked about that. Like that was one of the frequent, uh, themes of the show was just like, we're being overlooked. We're... So there's this weird imbalance in the show because at the same time they're getting paid more than they've ever gotten paid before. Um, so why do you think that is? Why is it that this, this specific segment, and I'm sure that somewhat relates as well to, to the brokerage side, uh, that, that's that been historically overlooked to this point? Because, you know, I think that there's sometimes a perception about drivers that it's more of this menial labor and it's not this highly skilled profession and they don't have the influence or maybe the buying power that the mega carriers do. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think a lot of content has been sent to them. And if you think about it, it's because a lot of the content wants advertisements from these carriers. But I think what a lot of people have been missing out on is like they'll go out and they'll make a recruiting show to recruit driver. Why would a like, why, why would I listen to a recruiting right. show if I was looking for a job? Like, I just wouldn't, wouldn't do that. Right. Other recruiters would. Like, you would make that content for other recruiters. What I, I think you want to do if you want to have a place that recruiters could consider valuable is make a site for drivers that is making them that content. I mean, that's the pathway to that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not that we're just, like, targeting recruiters or something. I think that there's, there's high yeah. value in here in just doing something that is not being done. And that's something that I've always liked, too, because I always see a lot of runway here in freight. I saw it when I decided to get in podcasting in 2016 and, and execute on that and join up with Freightways and build that Freightcast network. And now I think that we see that opportunity, uh, Craig and I do, that we can create this, this brand new platform that's different from Freightways, but we still have some of the infrastructure and some of the, port, the support that we do from that. We still have things like Freightways TV to get messaging out there. But we have this brand new platform that's a bit firewalled off from, from that market and more corporate speak of the freight waves and just having this more down-to-earth, in-your-face platform that really actually speaks to the concerns and issues of drivers. And as we grow, I think the, the broker and that more behind the desk, too, is going to expand in that. But just to target right off the bat, it's like, hey, this is for drivers, by drivers, mm -hmm. and it's got that bar stool vibe for it. Instead of breaking news, it's commentary on that breaking news. It's hot takes. It's the hottest takes in freight. That's so funny you said that. I had as a note to myself, uh, FUBU listed as one of the uh, one of the <laughs> subpoints of what you're doing because it just reminds me so much of that for by drivers, by drivers uh, previously for us by us. So take us a little bit into the opposite. Our audience is uh, content creators, marketers who are looking to try to grow their brand, try to grow a business, whatever. Um, take us into the operational uh, steps of you have this idea, Craig has this idea. Okay, great. But I mean, it's a, it's a whole new um, content platform in a lot of ways. Like, how do you go about validating it? What was what was the the process of going from there, to, and and that I think you're still going through um, up to launch. You know, I think that the great thing about sort of freight ways is when we have these great catalytic ideas, and especially when Craig sort of brings them to you and he finds that you're receptive to wanting to launch it, he will give you a ton of freedom to go and do that. He just wants to make sure you understand the concept that he's putting out. And fortunately on something like this, it's something that we had been thinking about anyway. And for me, I was just overjoyed to finally get the go ahead and go and expand uh, what we're doing with What the Truck and bring it to even more of a trucking audience through Back the Truck Up and doing that through a site and also exploiting things that um, even at Freightways, I don't think we go deep enough in, which is like TikTok and Instagram mm -hmm. and, 
and getting um, a YouTube channel that's really that really works well with truckers. And you can see a lot of those different channels and avenues really resonate through the content creators that are really doing with them. And those are the people that we want to partner with. We really want those those trusted voices there, those people who are who are hitting well. So initially, when he brings it to me, that's the first thing I really looked towards was like who's doing really well in the space, who's communicating well to drivers, and you know, like anything, when you're building a company, you've got to figure out what your resources is, you know, are internally, what my budget is to hire people for this, who that's already on staff can help out and fit in, what my role and everyone else's role is. But once we got all sort of that budget in line, the jobs were posted, and we um, we got all the wheels greased, It's it's been moving really fast. I mean, you got to worry about the other stuff, like the logos and those particulars. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, my wife is a graphic designer, so uh, whenever I need something like that done, I can just sit right next to her, which is a, which is such a... A luxury because mm. when I've worked with other graphic designers, it's cool, but like it, it seems like they get frustrated with you when you want to make a lot of changes, right? Yeah. Like, I really want their hands, but I need you to see my vision kind of thing. And sometimes they can get a little frustrated. So, having my wife, she already knows how annoying I, I can be and, <laughs> and she tolerates it. So, it's super beneficial because I, I, um, I get really into that part of it too, sure. you know, and I get just a little anal about and particular about stuff. And it's cool to, to be able to work with people who sort of understand that and understand the, the direction you're coming from. And it's made this whole thing a lot more, a lot more seamless. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that, you know, there's a, there's a big part in the industry right now where there's so many tools, there's so many um, do it yourself tools or no code tools or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, and so people are, are doing their best. They're trying it. But at the end of the day, when you're able to connect one-to-one with a person and just be like, this is what's in my brain. Can you help me make that happen? Um, that's, there's just something still about that that I think is, is invaluable. Any, aside from maybe that, which that sounds like you, you, you resolved that, any challenges or, or unexpected bumps that you've um, experienced? How's hiring been? Has that been you know, easier? Or- you know what? It, it, you know, it, it's interesting. And I think it was because these, these roles were pretty unique. No one else is really offering roles to build this new site. So we got a ton of resumes. And a lot of them were people who were just out of college and they had Mm -hmm. journalistic degrees and they had marketing degrees, which is fine. But I don't really care that much about degrees. I care about experience. And especially in freight and especially a site like this where I need front-facing people to communicate with drivers and, and translate freight and understand the issues and empathize with the issues. To me, it was incredibly important to get that from drivers. So um, that's really what I started keying into when I saw a few resumes from drivers start to come in. Then I started to interview them and see their reason behind wanting the role. And uh, they all had great ones. Mm. They all had great ones for needing to get out of the cab. It wasn't like some kind of attitude thing. They were sick of their dispatcher or they were sick of the industry. No, it was more family related mm. uh, concerns. One of them just had a child. They didn't want to be over the road for the, the kid's life. And another, the other gentleman that I hired, um, his uh, his mom isn't isn't you know she's she's sick. His parents are getting older, and he doesn't want to be so far away. It's a lot of anxiety being out there on the road. So I think what's the, the biggest surprise was it hasn't been a challenge so far. It's been rewarding in the sense that we are building this thing with this strong messaging for truckers, and we're living it as well by creating opportunities for people through employment, but also to get their message out through that site and to hear the um the the reception from that, from drivers and from other people in the industry, like yourself, who are like, why, yeah, why doesn't this exist in a more cohesive and mainstream and larger, larger fashion instead mm-hmm. of being so fragmented? I think that's the real cool part because there's already a lot of gravity here. I think the biggest challenge is probably just gonna be myself. Um, I've worked alone a lot producing things like what the truck and all that kind of stuff. And now I have to work with a team and I have to be a little bit more open to a team's ideas and their creativity. And I have to help coach and create other content creators out of the people who are on my team now. I'm looking forward to it, but I know it's going to be a challenge and I'm only going to learn by failing a little bit during this process. I apologize for everyone who's just joined the team. (laughs) Bear with me here. But I think that we're going to do a great job. And I think over the past few years, we've written a lot of this playbook at Freightway. So we've written a lot of it. And now it's just putting it into a new container, a new jar and presenting it in a new lens to people who, uh, who need it, who need this translated that way. Even things like Sonar. When I look at Sonar, our data platform, the way we translate information about that is is super, super market-based. But I think sometimes in all our acronyms, we can sometimes maybe lose the driver who is just like, I love the data. I want to know what's happening in the market, but I really just want to know where to run my trucks to. So I think that's a great opportunity to take things like Sonar and then take something like TikTok and make these like really easy to understand, super relatable, two-minute long, minute-long sort of Sonar 
chunks that hit you in the head and give you that data you need. And we're going to be doing that with the news stories and everything as well. So it won't just be written commentary. It's also going to have a very modern slant to it and looking at what other creators are doing successfully and our own ideas as well and executing them across multiple platforms. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'm excited to uh, check it out when it, when it, do, when is it, is it, do you, we know when it's launching or is that announced or? Middle of the month, um, middle okay. of the month. My, uh, my, some of my team starts next week. So the Exciting. staging is happening behind the scenes right now. We're bringing some of the content that is already on freight waves, like some of the, what the truck stuff. There's another show on there by veteran driver, Ingrid Brown, American 18 wheels. That's going to fit a little bit better over on back the truck up. So we're bringing that over there and her articles. And then the two new guys that I hired, they will be on next year. We're going to get them up and running, put them through content boot camp, And then hopefully that following week, when you type in back the truck up, the site pops Let's up. Let's go. All right. Well, we'll be, uh, we'll be on the lookout <laughs> for it. Maybe, uh, obviously, you've had a ton of success and, and um, you know, been able to launch uh, what the truck and, and really spearhead what's going on with, with freight cast. Um, but take us back. How did, this is such a, this is such a fringe, unique career that you're in you know what i mean um and i don't think yeah how how did that happen well i kind of had to make it up right i mean i had to sort of like make it up out of out of nothing it didn't exist nobody was professionally getting paid and getting paid decently to to podcast a lot of time people were getting maybe paid as part of content marketing in terms of a much larger marketing department and myself was too before i went to freight waves but what initially happened was long ago, I started the music industry, um, Napster and file sharing happened, that kind of road got cut off. So in 2005, I started uh, operationally being an entry writer doing uh, global ocean and air entries for FedEx trade networks. Um, I learned duty drawback, I eventually got into sales and I eventually got into um, well, in sales, I actually got I got fired in 2016. I was having some some issues uh, with with alcoholism and with depression. And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because it put me into rehab. And then when I was in rehab, I really wanted to start a podcast for a while. And uh, one of my counselors there was like, you should go do that. That will give you something to do while you're looking for a job and you're you're going to therapy mm. and, and you're getting yourself back together. You're rebuilding. And uh, I took that to heart and I was like, you know what? Worst thing that happens is this is a living resume. So in January of 2017, I started a show called The Shipping Pod. And um, after about 10 episodes, a gentleman by the name of Steve Aborn from Freight Plus, he heard a couple of the shows, and then he decided to hire me to be their director of uh, of marketing. Wow. So I went over there, launched a show called Consulting Logistics for them, and uh, which was fine. I, I had to do it, but it was only one day a week. You know, and the rest of the time, I'm doing like PowerPoints and stuff. The one cool thing educationally was Freight Plus is a 4PL. So I got to look a lot at trucking optimization right before I got to Freightway. So I had like two years of really staring deep into what was going on in different modes and trucking and optimization and getting that education. So um, when I interviewed Craig Fuller, he, he reached out to me almost immediately afterwards on LinkedIn. He's like, I love the interview. I love the energy. You need to come down to Chattanooga. If you ever want a job, there's one for you. And I was like, you know that feeling when something happens and you just have to mm-hmm. do it? Like, it didn't really, it didn't matter what the salary was going to be. I, all, I had, all, I, all I knew is I had to plug inside Amplifier at that mm-hmm. point in time in 27, in 2019, where Freight Waves was going and where I needed to go. That next breakthrough was clearly down in Chattanooga. So I took him up on the offer, came down for an interview. And then, um, and then from there, started out with What the Truck, built that up, went from one day to two days. Concurrently, they were building the Freight Waves TV network. And uh, I've always worked very closely with Freight Waves TV because a lot of our shows, we just take the audio yeah. out of that and use that with podcasts. And that's how we've built a podcast network, Freightcast, with over, I think, 20 different shows on it now. Um, I think we're over two to three million downloads wow. now just on that feed alone. And the cool part about that feed is we already produce all mm-hmm. of that stuff. Like they're already on their own feed. So all we're doing is just taking all this stuff, all this content that already exists making it easy for everybody by aggregating it all in one place. And then instead of having to subscribe to all your host's favorite shows or 20 different Freight Wave shows, you just subscribe to Freightcast and every single one of them is just on that feed. And it's been, it's been a, a brilliant move for us. I was, and I was almost against it at first because I'm like, well, won't it take away from what the truck or this show? But it turned out that podcasting has such crappy discovery. Like it's just terrible, terrible that this worked great because now our own shows are like the bigger shows are promoting the smaller yeah. shows. And now shows that like, they may not really stand up on their own, on their own feed, especially some of the newer ones. They do really well in the straight cast feed, though. So it doesn't matter because we're, we're going to bite from the burger on both right. sides. Yeah. And, and uh, like people like me who, you know, I'm not as I'm not as into 
the day to day of freight. I don't run a freight company or anything like that, but I like keeping tabs. We have clients in that space, et cetera. It's a really nice buffet of kind of like um, what is going on, different styles that I can chew on, different lengths. Um, so yeah, Freightcast is a, is a great idea and execution, I think. Um, just backing up, I just want to pull on, you, you talked about uh, a couple of things <laughs> on that journey because I think it's incredible. Yeah. But um, so you talked about uh, not having a job, going through some of those things. What drew you to podcasting specifically, do you think, in that? In that? You know, so I attribute, it's so funny, like it, your, your life is a composite of, of, of your journeys. And when I worked in LA in the record industry, I had a long commute to work and I used to listen to FM talk radio all the time. And um, when I moved, I didn't have that. I moved to Boston and I didn't, one of the reasons I moved back to Boston was so I could live in the city and I didn't need a car. So I was walking all the time to FedEx and FedEx was like three train stations away and a mile walk. So I listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, and that's when I really started getting into it, 2008, 2009. So I listened to podcasts for seven years straight as a very avid listener. And along the way, I always thought about starting my own. I just didn't know what to like do. I'm right. like, well, what will I talk about and how will I present it? And it was, it's like anything in life. Once the rug or the floor is removed, you kind of just go, all right, well, that's a lever mm -hmm. that I, that I had there. And, uh, and, and it worked out. Yeah, that's awesome. And so then you did the 10 episodes. What about those 10 or what? I, it could be, I get, so it's not shocking to me because I've seen in our own industry with our own company, um, we've had doors open for us just because we have a podcast that we have no business really having. I don't know that our company exists, uh, we're turning five this year without the podcast medium. Um, so, but for, for someone to just take you and hire you after 10 episodes to be the head of market or director of marketing is a little bit of a leap. What do you think you showed in there that was so uh, attractive to that company? Well, first of all, freight marketing is not the most competitive. Right? Field. True, so true. Uh, so what was hard at first about it, though, is I had no marketing experience. So every place I was, I was applying to, nobody wanted it. They're like, well, we have a sales role I for see. you. And I was like, no, I have. I just had got fired from two freight sales jobs in a row. It, it did not help with the depression right, or alcoholism right. or anxiety at all. So um, I knew that just from my car, like I couldn't do it. So I was turning down a lot of sales jobs at the time. Well, not making like like money. And and when they after the ten episodes, they did hire me to be the kind. Of, and I I kind of ran through the story a little bit. Originally, they hired me to write uh, some blogs and to do a podcast with them. That eventually turned into the full gotcha. role. So it did take a little bit of them sort of trusting me. Um, to jump into that position. But you said something really interesting there. And I think anybody who's making a B2B show should consider when they're doing that is that it's not the, like people get too hung up early on on the number of downloads. Yes. They're like, oh, you, and you will. At first, you're probably only going to get 30 downloads if, if your life, no one knows who you are. That's what's right. going to happen. And if you don't become a really good social media marketer, you're going to have an even tougher mm -hmm. time. However, it only takes like one person in your space to hear that or to see a competitor on there. And then it starts this sort of chain reaction where all of a sudden guests start coming to you and it starts growing and the messaging starts getting out there and it becomes a lot more competitive and then sponsors get interested. So it, it, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of routes to monetization. And I think that sometimes at first, especially in that year one, um, like I've seen a, a number of logistics companies start an abandoned podcast. Mm -hmm. Like they won't even go five to 10 episodes. They'll be like, okay, four episodes in, no one's listening. This is a, this is a waste of time because um, there's no barrier to entry to like get right. into podcasting, but there's a huge one to staying in it. Yeah, it's it's painful. I can't remember the percentage now off the top of my head because it's changed, but there's some insane percentage doesn't get past episode seven. You know, the endurance just isn't oh, yeah. there. Um, but I think you know multiple things. One of the things that is super difficult is is what you talked about earlier: the discoverability, right? Like if if you have an existing audience elsewhere, you have this huge, massive unfair advantage because you can just bring them over and then you have a, a ready-made business essentially when it comes to podcasting. For for the 98% of people or, or higher who don't have that, um, yeah, it takes that, it takes that uh, you know, whatever fortitude or, or just being able to put your gut into it and say, we're going to commit to this for 18 months or something like that. But I think what's, and I acknowledge you and think, give you massive kudos. I think what's even more impressive is not necessarily having that directional like North star and still, because like you were not having, didn't have a job at the moment or et cetera. And we're still like, I'm going to continue to pr produce. And even if it was 10 episodes, who cares? Like whatever it was consistently produce and put out 
And that's what we talk about all the time. Like that just always begets good. It just can't lead you into it. No one's ever been like, ah, I, I produced two years of episodes and it turned out that I fell into a really terrible job situation as a result. Like <laughs> it just doesn't happen. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing about the, uh, the industry, but before we let you go, I think the thing too, people, well, I just want to yeah, say yeah. one thing too. I think what people have to remember too, is that like, we all started without an audience and it, it took years to sort of, to sort of build that and to build it into like a big professional base, something you, like a, like something you could launch things behind and actually expect them to follow. And that, that, that takes a long time. I don't care how, how good you are. Like that's the investment. That's the real investment podcasting. It's, it's a time sink. And that first year, you're going to be putting a lot of time and the rewards may not always be there. But like in your industry, in mine, for example, I was looking at the, sh the podcast that were out at the time. They were like stripped audio from, from mm -hmm. webinars. There, there was not any competition. Like this, the stuff that was out mm -hmm. there sucked. Like, sorry to the, like those initial trailblazers, but like I, my North Star was not being them. Right. My North Star was just taking more mainstream production ideas that podcasts that I like are doing well and applying that to freight because companies mm -hmm. weren't. You know, and now I'm seeing more people make freight podcasts that are a little bit more out there and with more personality. And that's cool to see too. I mean, you know, I know I chopped through that jungle a little bit and it's cool to see that people are actually walking down that path. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's really exciting. And I think it's, it's only the beginning, you know, we're going to continue to see that. And, and also I wanted to touch on one thing you said, yeah, you can work and, and, um, you need talent, you need hard at work, whatever, whatever. The other thing is, you know, audience size is this nebulous thing and people put so much weight but like if you have a thousand people who are listening to your episode each week and i know that's not a ton on really any other medium um that is it that is a significant number that's that's a thousand people that's more than a movie theater you know a lot more who are coming to hear you essentially speak on a subject or or talk to other people about a subject every that blows my mind you know and so i think just recontextualizing how that now is that going to make you joe rogan in terms of money no but uh there's there's lots of different uh branches out there when it when it comes to that so anyway um it makes you easier yeah. to talk to also. I mean, like people hear the shows and they come up like they know you because of the most important part, I think, of almost every show isn't necessarily like the industry content. For sure. It's, it's the personality. It's, it's like letting people into your life. It's an intimate thing, podcasting. It's in people's ears. They're taking you to the gym. They're taking you to the grocery store. They're walking their dog with you. Like, take advantage of that. Realize you're speaking in people's ears. You're not speaking from far away. Yeah. Yeah, I love the energy and the the, the uh, passion that you talk about it with. So kind of with that in mind, what has you excited um, in content, but specifically with podcasting? I don't get to talk to like a true podcast nut like like you uh, too often. So, you know, what's exciting to you, whether it be something new that's coming or just uh, like you like you did before, a relayering of old ideas that can create something new, anything like that uh, top of mind? I mean, I'm so excited to work with a team and like, get inspired by the new creative directions and the creative things that people can do that, that I can't see as well, the blinders that I can't execute on. I've been doing podcasting for a, a, a long time. And not that I'm like bored with the, the medium or anything. I love it. I'm an, I'm an evangelist of it, but I don't have to think about like the technical side of it. And I do like thinking technically sometimes. So I'm excited to learn like just some new technical backend skills from some of these newer people because like people, like I'm not that good on TikTok. People are doing gangbusters <laughs> on TikTok, truckers are doing gangbusters on TikTok. There's no excuse Absolutely. for us not to be doing well in there. We just got to figure out. We got to crack the code. And that's where the team is going to come in. And I think it's not just going to help enhance back the truck up. I think it's going to help enhance what the truck. I think it's going to help enhance what we're doing. And ultimately, I think that runoff from that will also help enhance what, what FreightWaves does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will uh, definitely be on the lookout for, for the launch. Uh, I think it's going to be an awesome uh, new offering for drivers, brokers, but really anyone who's just curious in the content space uh, to watch what you all are doing and, and building together. Um, if folks want to keep up with you or definitely with the new project, what's the best way to keep tabs on all that? Yeah, I mean, I'm on Twitter all the time. You can find me at Timothy Dooner. That's uh, D-O-O-N-E-R. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Timothy Dooner. I, you know, I'll talk to anybody. I'm not pretentious about that kind of stuff. I actually love networking. I mean, I talk for a living. So <laughs> if you've got a good story, always come out to me. Uh, earn media on, on my show, not too tough. You're doing charity, you're doing something cool, you have something visually awesome, reach out to me. I'll see if I can get you on. Um, other than that, look up What the Truck, wherever you get podcasts. And in about the middle of the month, backthetruckup.com will be live and you'll be able to experience it.
Cool. And we'll put all that, uh, of course, in the show notes below. Dooner, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for giving us your time and uh, best of luck with the new launch. Thank you. Thanks for having me.